All right, welcome back to Whence Came You, a Freemasonic podcast featuring research papers and discussions related to Freemasonry. I'm your host, Brother Robert Johnson. Well, news for this week. Uh, Not much in the way of news. I did go on a somewhat spontaneous trip, probably the most spontaneous trip I've ever done, actually. You can read about it on last week's Friday post uh, by Brother Brian Shimian. What started out as a uh, Facebook post by Brother Rob Walk, who runs the Humble Pie Freemasonry blog, he actually wanted to make plans, and he was going to the George Washington Masonic Memorial, which is uh, maybe an hour or two from his house. Brian Chimian said, I am jealous. Rob Walk said, you're more than welcome to join us, but we're 12 hours away. I then said, I was also jealous. Uh, Brian Chimian text messaged me, said, what do you got going on this weekend? I had nothing going on. So we went ahead and I went to work that day at noon, got off of work at 9.30 at night. We drove 12 hours through the night, made it to Washington, D.C. in the morning, or rather Alexandria, Virginia, to the George Washington Masonic Memorial. And we went on the tour. We had lunch with Rob Walk, his wife, and his brother, which they were incredibly fantastic. And I have to thank them for being accommodating and sharing Brother Rob Walk with us. Really, we were excited to, to meet him and, and hang out and have a little bit of brotherhood and some fellowship. So thanks again to his family. You guys were awesome. So then Brian and I turned around and we drove 12 hours back home. I think we stayed up for 36 hours straight, slept for two hours, and then we woke up and drove the remaining four hours all the way home. We were exhausted. We both got home, but we were both up again by 11 o'clock the next day. So we had a long weekend, but it was very much worth it and incredible. And uh, Rob Walk should be coming out going to the uh, Masonic Symposium, going to be in Westchester, Illinois, uh, next year. You can find the details on that, our website, wcypodcast.com. Next week, I will be talking with Brother Anthony Mongelli, and I was hoping to have that interview already, but we had some scheduling issues. So this week, I do have an interview. It's a great interview with Brother Eugene Gross, so we're going to go right into that straight away. All right, today we're speaking with Brother Eugene Gross, who is the past master counselor for the state of Illinois. How are you doing today, Brother? Good. How are you, Robert? I'm doing all right. So... I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Demolay, because that is your title. You were the past master counselor for the uh, Demolay in the state of Illinois. And a lot of guys don't exactly know a whole lot about the Demolay and how great it is as far as a youth organization uh, leading civic leadership and and bringing guys into masonry. So, So for the guys out there who are listening, can you sum up what Demolay is? Well, yeah. DMLA is basically, it's a character and leadership building organization. We teach up communication skills. When I was state master counselor, you see me at Grand Lodge. Yep. I was down there meeting everyone at Grand Lodge, um, giving the speech, the keynote address. I gave the keynote address for the council deliberation last year during my year as well. And you really learn how to work with people and get the communication skills. Do not be afraid of the public speaking event planning, it's great for anybody going into the world. Sure. So, where do you guys get your name, Demolay? Well, Demolay, we're named after the last Grand Master of the Knights Templar, Jacques Demolay. Okay. Really, when Frankus Land was starting Demolay, the boy, the original members were looking for a name, what we're going to call a group. And so Dad Land told them a few Masonic stories. They wanted to name it after something Masonic. Because the Scottish Rite Cathedral is the one giving them the place to meet and everything. Okay. And so he eventually told them the story of Jacques Timoy and how he did originally give out a confession under torture, but which was later receded in public. Right. And then how him and Geoffrey de Charnay, who was one of his principal officers, they stood together and refused to give any information. They were burned at the stake. Right. And so they liked how he was loyal, and the, how the fidelity and the comradeship that Jacques Demolay showed during those trying times, and so they decided to name the group Demolay. Right, so you guys have a pretty steep uh, Masonic uh, background uh, all the way back to the beginning. What are the qualifications for membership in the Demolay? Well, like Lodge, you have to have the belief in deity. Okay. you got to believe in one supreme ruler. Doesn't We don't ask which one. And then be a young man of good character between 12 and 21. Now, 
in many states, you cannot apply for membership in a Masonic Lodge until you're 18 or 21. Um, so, obviously, Brother Gross is here talking with us, and he is also a Master Mason, and he is an active Dumoulet. So, I think I just wanted to reinforce the fact that you can belong to both at the same time. Um, in fact, many of the members do. Am I correct? Um, yeah, a lot of the guys when they were older. Um, last year on my state officer team, everybody who was 18 or older were Master Masons by the end of the year. Everyone who was old enough were Masons. That's awesome. So who can attend a Demolay event? Well, we have open events. Mm-hmm. We have closed events. Our open events, like our installations, are obviously open to the public. We all do sporting events, again, open to the public. Now, when we're talking about our ser- uh, some of our closed ceremonies, the initiation, the, the initiation and opening you know, stated meetings in general, you have to be an adult over the age of 21. If you're under the age of 21, you have to be a Master Mason. And or you have to be an active demolay. Okay, so basically, an adult, a master mason, or active demolay. Yep, we do allow guests to come in when we get to our business section, though. At least in the state of Illinois, we do. They're not allowed to see any of our ritual work, but they're allowed to come in and see how we run the actual business portion of our meeting. Understandable. That's good. Oh, uh, we do something similar in Illinois. We're allowed to open up Masonic Lodge mm-hmm. on the first degree of yeah. business meetings uh, to keep guys interested. So, oh, you guys do something kind of interesting, and you, you call the parents dad and, and so on. Uh, what is that referring to? What's that about? That's a good question, and that's also a very common one when young men and their parents are first getting involved with the organization. They want to know why my kid's calling this strange man dad. Mm-hmm. Back when Dean Lay first started, the, our founder, Frank Land, was helping a bunch of young men. One, namely, Lewis Lauer, who was the first Demolay. He was the one, he employed him at the Scottish Rite. His, his father lost his life. And it was started to help young men who lost their fathers or came from broken families. Okay. And that land became like a father figure to Lewis Lauer. And so he caught them out of one time, he just said, Dad Land. And it kind of stuck. I mean, they felt like they couldn't call him by his first name. It was way too informal. Mm-hmm. You don't call an adult by his first name. And they, for the relationship they had, they thought by, they thought calling him Mr. Land was way too formal. Sure. And so Dad Land kind of stuck. When they went out and started chapters elsewhere, Dad Land said, my young men call me Dad Land. I expect you to do the same to your advisors. Cool. And then later when women advisors got involved as well, female advisors, we started calling them out. Nice, nice. Yeah, it was it was interesting for the guys listening uh, and women listening. There was a time where I wasn't very uh, knowledgeable of the DMLA, only what I had read on the internet, on their official website, and some other things. And I was lucky enough to sit in on uh, Brother Eugene Gross's uh, installation of officers his last uh, year. And it was my first real experience in the DMLA, and I thought it was very powerful. It was a very great experience. Uh, an amazing ceremony, and that's what kind of caught my my attention was the respect that they really showed their parents by calling them dad and and mom. Even though you know that's not their dad, but they had that respect of those other parents and uh, their advisors. It's just an incredible organization from what I had seen, and I wanted to know what I could do to help out the DMLA because in some areas there are some uh, uh, dropping of membership, just like in Masonic lodges. And I really think the Demolay is something that, if you're a Master Mason especially, who has any aspirations for your sons to join a lodge, I really think it's imperative that you consider the Demolay as an option as soon as they're of age. It's an incredible leadership organization. I have three sons myself, and I can tell you that I will put them in Demolay as long as they're willing to do it. And also that if there isn't a Demolay available, I will look into starting a chapter. Brother Shimeon, who lives in Broadhead, Wisconsin, is looking to start a chapter, possibly. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about that with Eugene Gross uh, at a later date. Don't worry. I know guys. I know guys in Wisconsin, too. Great. Yeah, because like I said, uh, we're, we're really looking into it because his son is just about of age. And it'll be so I'm good. really I'm really good friends with the state master counselor. Well, the guy who's state master counselor at the same time as me from Wisconsin. Awesome. 
Awesome. So we talked a little bit about what you get out of DMLA and my next question was going to be why should a boy join DMLA, but I think we've already kind of covered that uh, with the leadership. Mm. And uh, Well, but the biggest reason why I think a young man would want to join DMLA would be the same thing that you see in Lodges is we really are a fraternity, we're a youth fraternity. Mm -hmm. I feel very strongly for all my brothers and all the members in DMLA, and I'll do anything for those guys. And it's so much fun having your brothers everywhere you go. The fun part about DMLA, the best part and what kept me involved and made me do what I wanted to do in the organization is, was the members. My favorite part is the long card rides to different events. The different events that we do around the state together. We have 100 guys plus from all over the state with a bunch of girls too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get together and we go out and we just have a ball together and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I've got to mention the girls. We have the five Fs of DMLA. Okay. Females, food, fun, friends, females. <laughs> this is good. It, an incredible organization. Like I said, you guys are, are really an inspiration, I think, to the future of masonry. And it is, whether your lodge has a DMLA that meets at your lodge or not, uh, you really should consider starting one or having one come to your lodge to do... to perform a ceremony or something. Uh, Eugene Gross has done us a, a tremendous favor in showing us some of the lecture work that he does at our open installations, mm -hmm. which has been uh, just amazing. Uh, at our last installation, uh, you can watch, if you go to the website, www.waukeganlodge78.blogspot.com, Worshipful Brother Patterson, uh, our secretary, uh, bought a GoPro camera, and because it's a public event, we went ahead and filmed installation and we have that it's an hd video and uh, you can watch the installation and you can watch eugene gross brother gross perform a really cool ceremony and it is called again i forget the name yeah um, that was the flower talk the flower talk and uh my wife was all teary-eyed after it my mom was all teary-eyed after it uh eugene performed it with dramatic flair and it was it was perfect and uh it was just amazing. And I'll say this for any of the Master Masons listening to the program. If you really want to see the best ceremony you can see out of everything I've seen all around the state, even in Lodge, my favorite ceremony I've ever seen is the Demolay degree that we do. It is awesome. I, I have yet to see it, and uh, as soon as you guys perform it, you know I'm going to be there. But uh, We're working on that. <laughs> well... What, what are the costs uh, associated with the chapter of DMLA? Well, are you talking about the join or that the chapter has to take care of? Let's, let's talk about the joining cost. Uh, I know a lot of parents out there who might be thinking, this sounds great, uh, but what does that cost? Well, DMLA International has its set one-time membership fee. For, you know, pay in your member for life, and that is $35. A lot of other, some other chapters increase that. Mm -hmm. And so 35 will go to DMLA International, and the rest of it goes in to help the chapter. Sure. Most of the chapters in Illinois, we don't do that. It's just a flat-out $35, and we send it in. Okay. Now, this this program is pretty worldwide, so are there is there DMLA worldwide? Oh, yes, there is. Actually, there's more DMLAs in Brazil than there is in the United States. Holy moly. Now... Is the degree work kind of the same across the board? It's the same ritual. It's the exact same. They just change the language and a few other things into it. That's great. So, like, they'll do the Pledge of Allegiance for their country. Sure. Like, sure. I've actually have been at plenty of events where there's brothers from other countries, like the Keyman Conference in Pennsylvania, where there's a bunch of our brothers from the north in Canada. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of my best friends in Dimoy, it was... Or is he's going out soon? The provincial master counselor for Ontario DMLA. Wow. He was at my conclave, and they like they'll do the Canadian Pledge of Allegiance. That's it. Okay. The cost seems relatively low. Um, like I tell brothers coming to a Masonic lodge, you know, dues might be sixty bucks a year. It sounds hefty to some. It sounds insignificant to others. But for the brotherhood and the camaraderie, it's nothing. And and as Eugene said, it's thirty five dollars. That's a lifetime fee. Um, do you guys have an annual dues as well, or no? No, there is no annual dues unless the chapter decides to do annual dues. So, see, just by that alone, you're you're looking at a lifelong membership for thirty five dollars. I mean, that's that's nothing. And for what you get out of it, and what I've seen the young men in the Lakes chapter of Demolay here in the uh, northern 
District of Illinois, it is worth, you know, an unimaginable amount of money to tell you what these kids get out of it. Yeah, you've met Brendan. I did meet Brendan. I remember watching Brendan join when he was 12 years old. World of difference. He's completely a different individual because of the Malay. I watched him. I watched him grow up. That's amazing. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because at installation, my kids, I've got three kids age six, four, and three, and my kids are uh, rampaging tornadoes of children. And uh, my kids only met Eugene one time, and when we got to the installation, my kids were all sitting down eating cookies, and Eugene walked in, and my, my youngest son yelled out, it's Eugene! It's Eugene! <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious. Uh, Eugene has a, a, a great a great, rep, uh, a great way of uh, hanging out with kids and stuff, and uh, what a great rapport he has with the kids. And I think it speaks to his, uh, his ability and leadership and, and uh, as an adult now, as a master mason. He's uh, just an incredible individual. Um, Thank but I, you. But I, wanted to, uh, I also wanted to ask, what do you think brothers can do who are master masons who aren't in Dimole, who never joined Dimole, but now know about it and want to support it. What can we do to support Dimole? The biggest thing is your time. There's actually a Dimole ceremony called the Cross of Honor, which is a special honor given out for service to the organization as an advisor. And there's a line in there where we say, we thank thee for giving the young man of Dimole the most precious thing which only you can give yourself. That is the biggest thing. We can have fundraisers, we can go out to Ace Hardware and wash cars and do Getty dinners and all those sorts of things. But every chapter I see that struggling, it all starts with adults and the advisory council. I could say the same thing with our chapter now. We have our advisory council chairman who's been super active since he was a DMOA. He hasn't left the organization. He's a ma- he was a master counselor here, here at Lakes Chapter. He's a past state master counselor, past executive officer for Illinois DMLA. Okay. And he's looking to get out of the organization for a few years and take a break. He's been at it for over 20 years. Right. Our chapter dad, he was a DMLA. He's a past master counselor. He was always heavily involved, and now he is getting older and looking at starting a family as well. Sure. And he's looking at stepping back from the organization. It all starts with adult support. Sure. So you've heard that, guys. I mean, if if you have the time, if you have a local DMLA chapter, it's as easy as asking somebody involved in the DMLA what you can do, and I'm sure that they're going to say, "Here you go. This is what you can do." Yep. And, and pretty soon, it's going to be you're going to be in it. But it's not something that you're going to look at as a chore. Um, these, you'll these guys are amazing. And you'll see your relationship with the young men. I mean, I have so many advisors who I'm great friends with. Dad, Luke Matson. He lives in. Oglesby, Illinois, he's a member of Occidental Lodge. When I was going through Lodge, I would I was also state master counselor at the time, and so when I'd be swinging by, I'd call him up, Luke, can I come? Can you help me with my catechism? I'm returning in a couple of weeks. And I'd go, just stop on my way home, sit with him for a few hours on his couch and go through my catechisms. I'm, it's 3 in the morning, I'm driving home from some place, and I'm really tired. I call Wendell, another one of our advisors, Dad, Dad Haney. Um, he's a great friend of mine, and You'll find that the advisors also have this great relationship with the guys, and they are your friends. I mean, I'm friends with so many of my advisors. Sure, sure. Well, Eugene, I want to I wanna thank you for spending some time with us uh, on the show and uh, and just say thank you for all that you're doing for DMLA in the state and masonry in general. And if you guys don't know, uh, Eugene is actually, he joined the Air Force, and he ships out, I believe, in January. January 21st. January 21st, he's going to go serve our country, and he's going to uh, kick some butt. He's doing just about the one of the hardest things you can do in the military, and I can't remember the name of it. But uh, I know not yet. I'm gonna try to do that you're, later. I might. T- I'm disqualified because of my eyesight. You dis- well, that's you have to have 2020. I got disqualified for that also. So you're in a <laughs> special club. <clears throat> anyway, uh, thanks so much, Eugene, for for hanging out with us today and and spending some time with us. All right. Thanks for having me. It was a great time. All right. We'll talk to you later, buddy. All right. All right. I hope you enjoyed Brother Gross. He's a really funny and intelligent guy, and let's all wish him well in his journey into the armed forces. So next, I'd like you to please support the show by picking up either the show application, which is available for Windows phones, Windows 8, Apple, and Android devices. You can also use Stitcher Smart Radio and the promo code WENCEKANE with no spaces. 
You can shop at onit.com, but you click through the links on our website, wcypodcast.com. Click on the links for Onit, and you can even use a promo code WCY to get 10% off your order. And lastly, you can donate to the show via PayPal, which there is a link on the website as well. Remember, all proceeds go right back into the show and pay for the hosting costs and other elements that we need to keep on top of in order to keep bringing you a show. Please don't forget to check out the Midnight Freemasons on the web at midnightfreemason.blogspot.com, on Twitter at Midnight Masons, and on Instagram as well at Midnight Freemasons. If you find them on Facebook, give us a like and share the stories that you find. Next is the famous Freemason of the week. And the famous Freemason for this week is Brother Ira Allen, born the 21st of April, 1751 in Cornwall, Connecticut. He passed away on January 7th, 1814, and he was one of the founders of Vermont. And he was a leader of the Green Mountain Boys, and he was the brother of Ethan Allen. Ira Allen was born the youngest of six sons, born to Joseph and Mary Allen. In 1771, Allen went to Vermont as a surveyor for the Onion River Land Company. The Allen brothers established the company in order to purchase lands under the New Hampshire grants. Through this, Allen was involved in a dispute with New York over conflicting land claims in the region. He was a member of the Vermont legislature in 1776 through 1777 and was a leading figure in the declaration of the Vermont Republic in 1777. He and his brother Ethan were implicated in potentially treasonous actions when they entered into the negotiations with Frederick Haldimand that suggested they might turn Vermont over to the British. Allen designed the Great Seal of Vermont and the Seal of the University of Vermont. In 1780, he presented to the legislature a memorial for the establishment of University of Vermont. He contributed money and a 50-acre site at Burlington. He was called the Maternic of Vermont and the father of the University of Vermont. He served as the first surveyor general of Vermont from 1779 to 1787. In 1789, he married Jerusha Enos, the daughter of Roger Enos and Jerusha Hayden Enos. Members of the Allen and Enos families were the original proprietors of Irisburg. Ira Allen subsequently acquired all of the proprietary rights to Irisburg and deeded the town to Jerusha Enos as a wedding gift. He went to France in 1795 and sought French army intervention for seizing Canada to create an independent republic called United Columbia. He bought 20,000 muskets and 24 cannons, but was captured at sea, taken to England, placed on trial, charged with furnishing arms for the Irish rebels, but was acquitted after a lawsuit in which lasted eight years. He owned undeveloped land, including a stake in Barton, Vermont, and was a major stakeholder in Irisburg. Vermont, which was named after him. He was a member of Vermont Lodge No. 1 of Charleston, New Hampshire. That's it for this week. Please remember to find us on Facebook and follow on Twitter at Whence Came You. Check out our podcast partners, Brother Juan Sepulveda of the Winding Stairs podcast at Winding Stairs 33 on Twitter. And you can also check out Brother Rob Lewis on the Far From Centered podcast, and you can follow him at Far From Centered or Robert P. Lewis on Twitter. I should mention that I had someone ask about Masonic Conspiracy segments. Well, I'm still doing those, but they are on Brother Juan Sepulveda's show, The Winding Stairs. So head on over there and you can check out his show and you can hear those Masonic Conspiracies. And if you can't get enough famous Freemasons, then you can head on over to the Far From Centered podcast where I deliver a new one of those every week as well. Please remember to show some love to PB&J Water and talk to Brother Jeff Koch about your water needs, pbandjwater.com. And can't forget about FraternalTies.com, the best Masonic neckties and bow ties in the world. Until next week, stay on the level. For Whence Came You, I'm Robert Johnson.